And joining us now here on In the Circle, she's a three-time national champion, three-time national pitcher of the year, <clears throat> considered the most decorated player and the greatest player in the history of Division Three at Virginia, not only at Virginia Wesley, but perhaps of all time in all of Division Three. I speak of Hannah Hall, who joins us on In the Circle. That's a good, you know, I think introduction. I would say so. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, let's start with this. Uh, you've had some time here. Have you had a chance to reflect on this la latest uh, third national title here recently where you all won in, in uh, Salem against Texas Lutheran? Yes and no. It still feels crazy. Um, but, you know, having a few weeks to really process it and process the season, um, I'm just so proud of the team for coming together. You know, I think we definitely had the ability to do it. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things that have to come together to make that happen. And so I'm just so proud of everybody. Um, I think we had such a great run this season and couldn't be more happy with how it turned out. Tell us what it was like this, you know, this year. This was you for you. This was your extra year. And, and we'll get into, yeah. you know, how do you come to that decision to come back? Uh, but let's first start, like, describe the season, what it was like, what the challenges were, because I know there was protocols you all had to follow and everything yeah. like that. And was there any doubt about the season? Like, just describe what the season was like. Yeah, well, I think from a team point of view, um, the COVID protocols were definitely tough. Um, you know, because we're, we're doing all the softball side of things, but we're wearing a mask the entire time. We're not able to hang out at, outside of softball. So that made it tough, you know, because things like team bonding, you know, those are better off the field. And, you know, having those relationships with people, so I think that was definitely tough for us um, to just have to strictly be at the field and then go our separate ways. Uh, but for me personally, it was by far the toughest year. Um, you know, I think I just had a lot of things going on, you know, from you know a personal side of things, you know, with school and working and stuff like that. So it was really tough for me at times. You know, I felt very overwhelmed. And there were times where I questioned it. I was like, you know, is this the right decision? Did I, you know, did I do the right thing? But at the end, you know, when we win it all and being able to spend an extra year with some of my best friends, um, it was definitely worth it. And, you know, the, the, the protocols and stuff like that, I mean, everyone had to go through it, you know. So I think that it was tough, but it was doable and we got it done. And again, I'm just so excited, so proud of everybody, you know, us coming together. So. Did you feel, when did you feel during the season that you're like, yeah, this team could definitely win the national title because you know what it takes. You've done it, but you know, it's no guarantees, obviously. Was there a moment during the right. season where you're like, hey, we could do this? You know, I definitely think that we kind of had a little bit of the ups and downs. You know, we have a game where we were kind of like, oh man, <laughs> but then we'd have some really good games where we came together. Um, I think for me, it was probably the Guilford game. Um, it was, I think their first games of the season and, you know, we had been playing a little bit longer than they had, but we came out and we hit the ball like I've never seen before. And I was like, wow, if we can do that, if we can have a consistent offense from one to nine, like we did, um, and, you know, keep our pitching up our defense. I think I thought that at that point, there was no doubt that we had a shot to do it. For those that don't follow the program that closely, just talk about some of the other players on this team. Cause you get a lot of attention, rightfully so, but you got a lot of talent. Golden, for example, who's a national oh player of the year. Uh, Jessica Golden was unbelievable. Just talk about some of the key players on your team that made this year so uh, so successful. Well, obviously, you named it. Uh, Jessica Golden had an outstanding season. Um, you know, she was unreal. Like, I thought to myself, I would not want to throw against her. Like, I'm so happy she's on my team. Um, but, you know, Julia Sinet, um, Maddie Glopke, you know, the girls that, you know, you've seen, um, and, you know, especially for me having the two other fifth years, you know, come back, um, that was really special because that's something that, you know, we wanted to finish together. Um, so those girls have been awesome. We had a lot of girls step up. Uh, Kayla Womack had a lot of outstanding, um, you know, game winning hits and stuff for us. And, you know, she, she wasn't originally playing, you know, at shortstop and she was able to come in and do a phenomenal job. All the seniors, Caitlin Biondo, Danny, I mean, just just everybody did such a great job. Um, we had just an outstanding lineup, I think, from top to bottom, both defensively and offensively. So coming from a pitcher, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Jessica Golden, I got to read, eight home runs, 23 doubles, <laughs> yes. 11 triples, 488 average, 
890 slugging percentage, 73 steals. I when I first yeah. I remember when I first looked at her stats during the postseason, I'm like, is these real stats or are they being like combined career stats? <laughs> How right. how does she do this as somebody you see her every day? How does she do it? Uh, man, Jess is one of those people where you would think that those stats would be, you know, she'd be so happy with that. And there were games where she's like, man, I got to get my act together. I'm like, you're doing such a phenomenal job. Like, it's okay to have an off day. But she was always just so tough on herself throughout the season. And that just shows you the type of player she is. You know, she's expecting the most out of herself. And I think that that's, you know, really what pushed her this season was, you know, I know I can do this. Now let me prove to everybody else. And I think that, you know, she had a lot of things to prove from a, a personal standpoint. So I think that her being able to do that, I'm just so proud of her. Um, she, like you said, had one of the most outstanding careers I've ever seen, um, especially season. Oh my gosh. So yeah, she, she really worked hard and did a phenomenal job. 73 steals like I, that yeah. doesn't happen in any level of softball I mean anymore no. like that's a like she's like old she could do everything she's like a five tool player isn't she yeah well so we it's funny you say the steals because she and I had a little thing going where at the beginning of the game I say hey I bet you can't get three stolen bases in a game and she'd be like <laughs> okay bet <laughs> so we had like a little thing going on to try to you know kind of challenge her and stuff but she was always up for it um you know she's very confident in what she does and I think that's just what makes her the player she is. Describe the postseason run. And, and, you know, you know this is your last one, probably in your back of your mind. Was there extra – did you put extra yes. pressure on yourself? Were you able to just enjoy the moment? Just describe that postseason run. Well, I think starting out the ODAC tournament, um, it was different because we weren't in a tournament setting. So it was kind of weird to play the best two out of three not something we were used to, but we loved having the home field advantage and being able to play at our field the whole time. Um, and having it a little more spread out was nice because you didn't feel as fatigued, you know, going into some of those games. Um, and then honestly, the regional tournament was tough. Um, you know, TC and J, they came out and we, you know, we were worried at some point, you know, we got behind um, in that, you know, second to last game. And I, I really believe the winner of that first eliminate, or I'm sorry, that first game that we played against them was going to win the, you know, the regional tournament. And so for us to come back, we were down, I think, by three in the bottom of the seventh inning. And, or I'm sorry, I think we went to extra innings. Um, so that was really tough uh, for sure because they were very good. And I, you know, I think they would have made a really good run in the final eight. Um, and then, you know, coming into the national, you know, championship series, I mean, that was tough. You know, all those teams could have easily won, you know, DePaul, Texas Lutheran they were all very competitive teams and you never really saw any crazy games. I mean, they were all very close, you know, pitcher duel a lot of the time. So just to be able to come out there and compete, um, you know, we were definitely, there were times when we were like, Hey, we got to get it together. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'll take my team over any other team. And I think that, you know, we played when the big plays when we needed to, and I think we came together and we made a really good run. You were obviously in Salem for the World Series. Describe that experience compared yeah. to the previous World Series experience. Because I think the previous two, were you in Oklahoma City? Were the other ones? Where were the other? Yeah. Right? How do you compare? Yep. So, yeah, that was different. That was different. Um, You know, I think that on one side of it, it was really nice to have that kind of home field advantage where obviously not Wesleyan, but, you know, being in the state of Virginia and having fans that are able to drive a couple hours and they're there. Um, I think that was really beneficial for us. We were get, able to see a lot of people and have a lot of people cheering us on. But on the other side of it, it was weird playing at the same facility that we played our, you know, our, during the season, you know, we play Roanoke there. And then also um, postseason, we play our conference tournament there. So that was kind of weird, but I think it was to our advantage because we're very used to playing there. You know, we know the field. Um, so I think overall it was definitely an advantage, but, you know, it's weird to not have to hop on a plane and, you know, fly. And, um, it was weird, but I think it was good, you know, being at the, you know, Hall of Fame stadium is a lot different than, you know, more complex, but the, uh, the people there did a phenomenal job. Um, you know, so I think it was, a, I think it was a good thing for sure. For you and the seniors, that this was their last year, maybe a fitting way, though, right? Like, hey, right in your backyard, Salem, maybe the perfect way for your career to end. Maybe it was destined to be this way. That's kind of what we said going into it. You know, we were like, this is this is our field. Like, 
never would we have thought we would finish our careers there is, is kind of something that we kept saying, you know, of all places you would think, you know, Oklahoma or Texas, what we were hopeful for, but, you know, never did we think it would be good old Salem. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think, again, it was definitely to our advantage. Um, we felt very comfortable playing there. Um, you know, we knew the area. So overall, we were, we were happy with it. You in the championship series, you get matched up with Texas Lutheran, which, you know, and I, I think I asked you, and I know I definitely asked Coach Elliott during the post, you know, this was a huge series to the casual softball fan, even fans that maybe don't follow Division Three on a closely basis. They yeah. were invested. They were watching this series. Uh, did you know this? Did you was that something you all were kind of like, hey, you know, because they were the defending national champs. Right. You, you want the trophy back. Did you kind of kind of take a peek there? What? Did you could you tell that this was not just, not that any series is just a typical series they're all big but this this was special in a little way oh absolutely um you know like you said them winning it you know 2019 and then us 2017 2018 you know the last two years these have been the two teams you know that have that have made it all the way so i think that there's definitely um there was some nerves there and i think that you know, we were prepared for anything, but we kind of had a feeling that we would see them towards the end of the tournament um, and they would be really tough to beat. And I think, you know, coming out of the gate, the first game, it was a really, really good win. Um, and that second, you know, game, it was tough. Death, you know, hits that triple and we're so close to, you know, coming back and maybe tying it up and going into extra innings. But, I, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to do so. So I think that last game when we told ourselves, hey, let's reset right now. They have the momentum. You know, they just won this big, this big elimination game. So we've got to come in, we've got to be ready and just do what we do, you know, and just not have that pressure and know that we're able to do it. And so it was tough, but I definitely think that, you know, we came out swinging the, the third game and we were ready to win it. I've always been fascinated with the format. Obviously you play the single game and then you have the double header yeah. two days. You pitch right. game one, you win. You don't pitch game two. So yeah. Are you wondering, like, man, if I pitch my last game, but at the same time, you almost have, you have to be prepared in case you do have a game three. Take me through how do you prepare not knowing if you're going to pitch or not? Well, that was um, that was pretty tough. We we had that conversation going into the, the first game of the day or that second game of the series. Um, and, you know, we just decided, you know, Emily's had a heck of a season. She's been outstanding. And so we had all the confidence in the world in her. And so I think that, you know, we said, look, like, let's give her a shot. You know, I had thrown the day before I was a little more fatigued. Um, you know, she was fresh. She was ready to go. I think that, you know, they had seen a lot of up, up, you know, outside. And so I think for her to be able to come in and throw a drop ball, a nice off-speed pitch, I think it was a good move because they, they were seeing something completely different. And so, you know, we had said if it's a situation, you know, I might come in at the end of that game, or if not, I'll start game three. So I think that that was a smart move. And, it was the first inning that they scored that couple of runs and then she held her own and she did a phenomenal job. I mean, so you can't ask for anything more from her. Um, I thought she did great. You mentioned Emily seal. She had a great year herself. I mean, you two were a great one, two punch. Talk about her, what she brought to the team and how she helped you. Cause you didn't have to carry the load. Yeah, no, she was outstanding in so many ways. We joke about her. Um, she is the most, calm and collected person um there are no nerves whatsoever with her she just does her thing um and I think that's what's so cool about her is you know a lot of times coming in as a freshman you have all these extra nerves because it is your first year it's your first time you know being in a college setting and playing that type of you know caliber and so I think for her to just come in and do what she does and not have a care in the world is so awesome and I think that she helped me a little bit because you know I had a lot of nerves throughout the season like I said it you know I had a lot of anxiety going on just wasn't my best work especially at the beginning of the season and so you know to see how calm and collected she was it kind of settled me down a little bit um but yeah no she she was outstanding all year I mean I couldn't have asked for a better you know person to split time with I mean she just she did a phenomenal job I'm really proud of her and I think she's going to continue to do a great job so you you know you get to game three you know this is it either way this is it your last game yeah. no matter what <laughs> What goes through your mind now once you know this is it, this is your last game, you come out there, and of course your offense comes, gets off flying, they're rolling. Yeah. Uh, take me through that as you're going through the game, and then as you get into those last outs. You know, go out with a bang. Like, that's what I told myself. I'm like, there's a reason that I, you know, I did this entire year 
There's a reason that other girls came back. This program is something very special. And we knew we wanted to leave our mark and know that, you know, we came back for the right reasons and to be able to win it all, we knew we could. Um, but, you know, it was, it was tough. I mean, just, you know, thinking about, you know, back to that, especially after losing the second game, you know, we kind of felt a little bit down on ourselves. And so I'm just so proud of the team for just being able to pick themselves up and, I think I was probably one of the most nervous people going into that. You know, I couldn't eat before. I was super nervous, super anxious. And, you know, I had girls come up to me like, hey, we got this. We're good. You know, and I think for them to just, for us to always just have each other's backs, you know, when someone's down, pick them up. And so I think that we did a great job as a team just picking it up that third game. And, you know, when we came out swinging that first, um, that first, at, you know, inning I think in the first couple innings I was like you know what we're good <laughs> let's just do our thing have fun and and you know it turned out okay so what's interesting you you said you admit you were nervous and, and oh yeah and people might be surprised at that because some people might say wait a minute you've been through this before you had one two national titles before why more ner- were you more nervous now than you were maybe the previous years I mean why why you know that because some people might think well you're experienced you would think you would kind of be accustomed to it yeah, no, I definitely think that I was, um, it never gets easier. I, I, you know, I think back, I definitely was very nervous the first, you know, couple of years, but for different reasons. Um, this time, I think for me, it was something, you know, that I needed to prove to myself and to, you know, other people, I, you know, again, I, I did not have a great season coming in. Um, you know, my first half of the season was pretty bad <laughs> for me. And so I felt like, you know, I worked so hard to come out of that slump. And I just, you know, I wanted to prove it to myself, like, hey, you still got it, you can still be in this type of environment, you know, and do well. So for me, that last game was kind of like, go out with all you have and just, and just show yourself, you know, why you did this, why you came back. And so and then from a team perspective, you know, we were just, we had a great season. And I think that, you know, we, had every ability to win it and I think that we were all just trying to tell ourselves like hey this is it you know we have I think what it's like 12 people graduating you know we have a lot of great talent coming in a lot of girls on the team that are awesome and so I think for us to just say like as a group you know a large group going out we just wanted to show everybody what we were made of so by the way for those that are wondering uh, Hannah Holt went 23 and 3 with a 107 here right that's not bad (laughs) (laughs) No, it's not, um, you know, like I, I had a few outings and if you look at, though, at my walks and stuff, I, it was not, you know, I don't usually do that. I don't walk a lot of people and I had a lot of walks this season. Um, and I think, again, that was for me, you know, getting uptight, getting nervous, you know, my form kind of went away. <laughs> you know, when you get uptight like that, it's really hard to, you know, stay composed and to just relax and do it. And I think there was a lot of situations where I did it to myself. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't my ability. It was me getting in my own head. So I think that is, you know, looking at the stats, it doesn't look that bad, but the way I felt, you know, it just something I hadn't felt before. So it was definitely tough, but again, you know, it worked out. So um, it was okay. How much of that was just self pressure? Cause you have such a high standard for yourself. Was that a part of it, knowing this was your last year and you're like, you, I want to make sure this is the right decision. I want to play at my standards. And if I'm not reaching that, I get frustrated. Right. I think that's definitely what it was. And I think, again, you know, it being my last year and there was a choice, you know, and, and it, it was even different than the year before where it was my senior season. You know, it, that was the plan to play four years and be done. So making this big decision to come back and play a fifth year, um, I kept telling myself, you know, oh, did I make the right decision? You know, this and that. And I think that's what it was. It was, you know, this is it for one. And then two, did I make that right decision? So um, I definitely think there's a lot of pressure for myself. And, you know, when I got down, you know, those days where it just, I was bad, <laughs> you know, I, I, I questioned it. And so I think that, you know, it was probably midway through the season. And I said, look, I got to get it together because I have to understand that, you know, regardless how this turns out, like this is it for softball, you know? And so I think that a lot of people are so worried about the performance side of things because I was the same way, but I had to just tell myself, this is it. This is the last time I get to compete and play this sport. Like, why not enjoy it? You know, don't think of all the other stuff that could happen or that has happened. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the day. Enjoy being in the moment because in a couple of months it's gone. So that was kind of my mentality through that. 
I hear you. We're speaking with Hannah Hall, of course, three-time national champion, three-time national pitcher of the year in Division Three, the all-time winniest pitcher, the history of Division Three here on In the Circle. You've alluded to this. You alluded to this during the postseason run. You've alluded to it during here, the interview, which is a difficult decision to come back. Obviously, we all know what happened 2020. The season came shut down and everything. Take us through that time lapse. Once that season, you knew it was shut down out of nowhere. Obviously, there's shock, uh, disappointment. Now you're wondering about it, you know, was did I just, my career just end abruptly? Take us through that process, and, and why was it such a difficult decision to come back, and how did you make that decision that, you know what, coming back was the right decision? Well, um, I think there's a lot of things, you know. So initially when the season ended, you know, we didn't know that there would be an extra year granted to a lot of these players. And so I thought for a while that it was over, and I was <laughs> – yeah, that was so tough because, um, you know, you always want to finish your career on a, on a high note and, or at least, you know, feel that it was completed. And I think for me and a lot of the girls, it just felt like it was kind of ripped from underneath us. And, you know, we didn't have that completed four years, that completed journey. And so um, I remember Maddie uh, and Jess made the decision before I did to come back and play a fifth year. So I remember them calling me and saying, hey, you know, we can't do this without you. Like, come on, come on. And so I think that was for me, you know, knowing that I had the opportunity to play with them another year and to play with this team. And I knew that I would look back or look forward in the spring and say, gosh, I should have done that. You know, like, I can't believe that I had the opportunity to be out there with them and I didn't do it. And so um, it kind of just all fell into place for me. Um, I got a job in Virginia Beach. I wanted to do the master's program. And so once all of those things kind of started falling into place, I knew it was the right decision. Um, and so I think it just, it just all worked out for me. And I, you know, again, I'm very grateful. I'll be graduating uh, from the master's program in August. And, you know, it just, again, it all worked out. <laughs> That's a full plate going to, ma- you know, yeah. master school, you know, great, try to get your master's and grad school and then pitching and getting a job. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a full plate. It is. Yeah, I think that's, again, where the, you know, the anxiety came into play a little bit because I was just so used to focusing on, you know, class and softball, class and softball. And then when you have all of these other things factored into it that you haven't been really prepared for, um, you know, that can make a season very tough. So I think that that, you know, again, especially the beginning of the season, that was a lot of that anxiety, just trying to balance everything. But I think I got it down. So <laughs> I think you did. I think you did a good job of that, figuring that out. Um <laughs> Let's talk about growing up. What got you interested in playing softball? Uh, did you have a favorite player, athletes growing up? What got you interested in playing softball? Um, you know, I I didn't really have any, you know, it wasn't until like high school that I really got into watching softball, like on the professional level. But um, my parents, <laughs> you know, I was think like four or five years old and we just decided to do like a little, a little league kind of thing. And I loved it. And so um, I think I started playing travel when I was nine. And then that's all I knew until right up until I graduated from high school. It's every weekend, you know, you're somewhere. Um, and again, just my parents just being so supportive. And I don't think people realize how much dedication it takes to to have a kid in a, in a travel sport. I mean, you're every weekend in another hotel and to just have their support, um, you know, and backing me up, I couldn't have done it without them. So I definitely think that, you know, they kind of pushed me to it. And, you know, once I, I got into it, I loved it. Um, and then they were able to help me and guide me through, you know, all those years of just being able to do it and, you know, driving me to places and stuff like that. So they were definitely a big part of that. Describe how you ended up at Virginia Wesleyan. What was it about Virginia Wesleyan that drew you to go there? Well, I'm going to be honest, it was uh, initially Coach Elliott. I mean, he, you know, it can be a very intimidating um, process to interact with the college coach, um, you know, and being, you know, younger in high school, I'm not sure there's many people that aren't intimidated by that. Um, and so he just made me feel so um, comfortable and he made me feel wanted you know I feel like there's a lot of times when you have to reach out to those coaches and it's kind of like you you know trying to push to them hey you know look at me 
but you know he always was very personable um you know always expressed interest and um was just so nice and outgoing and he just made me feel comfortable and so I went um and toured the school and um it was small I loved it I loved the location Virginia Beach is awesome um so I think it was just all those things and I knew that you know, their program had some success. And so, you know, I wanted to be, you know, a part of a competitive program. And so I think all of those things combined um, is kind of what drove me to my decision. Describe what's he like to play for. He is regarded as one of the, if not the best head coaches, not only in division three, but among all levels of college. I mean, his, his name pops up anytime for any level and things like that. Describe what's it like playing for him. So we always joke. So there's uh, the recruiting coach Elliot and then the coach coach Elliot. <laughs> there was, you know, we always, because like you said, he's so outgoing, bubbly, personable, which he's obviously like that on the field, but he's very intense. And, um, you know, but one thing I love about him is that he shows so much emotion and whether it's bad or good, you know, whether he's yelling at you or whether he's praising you, um, you know, that he has so much heart. And that's what makes him such a good coach is that, you know, you can, you enjoy playing for someone that, that has all that emotion and that is able to, you know, pump the team up or, you know, maybe yell at us when we need it, but um, just, he's very intense and not everybody can play for him, but I'm telling you for the girls that do, there's some times when he really upsets us, but then at the end of the day, and especially after you've, you know, graduated and had time to reflect on it. You know, he has taught us so much both on and off the field and just how to carry yourself. And um, he's he's awesome. 20. Let's go kind of to your first year, if you will, there in 2017. You guys went 54 and three. You get to Oklahoma City and you just roll in the championship series against St. John Fisher. They did not score against you. You beat Texas Tyler twice. you know, yeah. in the in that series there after you know you played them a bunch of times actually during that run at Oklahoma City what describe that first year why were you all so successful in that first year and you in particular you know a lot of times a freshman it takes them a while to adjust to a you know college level and things like that but you all kind of picked it up right from the get-go well I'll say in that first um you know that first year it was hard uh just because we didn't know what to expect it, you know, the second and third year years, I'll say definitely got a lot easier from that point of view. But I think from the first year, we were just so excited to be there and just be a part of it. And, you know, that first game of the series, we lost to Texas Tyler and um, I think it was like four to one, but it, that score didn't even reflect. I mean, they, they way out hit us and, you know, they kind of put, a stomping on us a little bit but then I think after that you know we we had one elimination game left so at any point that we lost we were out so um and so I think that at that point we were like you know what let's just have fun like we're here for the first time this is exciting so after that there was no pressure it was just let's just go out and have a good time and I think that's why we were so successful because we never at any point felt like all right we have to prove to these people we have to win it we were like this is our first time here you know, we're just happy to be here. And so I think that that was, that was kind of what drove us to that success. You're right. Cause you had to come out of the losers bracket to win that national yeah. title. You know, that was a big topic in D one, but you guys made that cool before D one decided to jump in on that uh, deal. <laughs> and you mentioned, you know, and then you win the next title in 2018, but then you don't win it in 2019. How much was that part of your motivation of coming back that your last full year was you didn't win that national title. So you wanted it kind of ended on a high note, kind of, you know, I've spoken to Kat Osterman on this show and she said the reason she's back in the Olympics is unfinished business. Was that the same case for you as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, You know, I think it was hard because up until that was my junior year, I, we had never lost and been completely eliminated in a postseason. So I didn't know how that felt until my junior year and it sucked. I mean, it, it was, it was really bad. I just, and again, it, it was a team that we play in the conference every year. And, you know, we had faced them, I think at that point, like five or six times. So it was just tough because, you know, we felt like, dang, I mean, we keep playing, we keep playing them. At some point we're going to lose. And, you know, Lynchburg came out that day with a ton of energy. They had a lot of talented girls. And so, and we got outplayed. I mean, and, and that's just, you know, what it is. We had a bad day. We got outplayed. Um, they did a fantastic job. And so 
as much as that sucked, you, you had to give it to him that day. But I knew, it's, you know, after that, I was like, I do not want to feel that way again. And so I, I felt really confident in the 2020 season. I thought we were going to do really well. We came out the gate um, hot. And so for that to be, you know, taken away was, was not a good feeling. And so, like you said, it was unfinished business, you know, the year before, it, you know, it had gotten cut short. So this year was, it was our time, you know, and so we wanted to finish it and close that chapter. And again, so glad I did. <laughs> I think it worked out well. You win that national title. Wade Wilson, the Texas Lutheran head coach said after the game, you're the greatest of all time. He's not alone in that opinion. You have over a hundred awards. If you want throughout your career, you have all the significant records. What's it like? And this is kind of the last couple questions as we wrap up is what's it like when now people are going to recognize you as the greatest of all time. You're the goat there that, you know, that was on social media, things like that. How does that make you feel when you hear that? Is it, is it humbling? What, what's it like that, you know, you're, you're regarded as the goat. Oh my gosh. It's such an honor because I mean, just to have other people, you know, say that, you know, you have your family and your, your friends that kind of hype you up a little bit and, you know, make you feel good. But to hear that from someone that, you know, you don't really know is, is just such an honor. Um, and again, I, I never would have thought that this would have happened. I thought I would have gone to Wesleyan, you know, thrown some innings, you know, had a decent career and, and been done with it. And so just to, to have the success and to, you know, I give all the credit to my teammates, my coaches, my family. I mean, because really without them, you know, I lacked confidence a lot and they were, they gave me that confidence. And I think that that's really what I needed. And I needed people to push me, you know, out of that comfort zone. And so without them, none of this would have been possible. So I just appreciate them, you know, more than they could ever know. Last question. What's next for you now? Oh, um, well, I have a wedding to plan. Um, and then I am done with softball. So no six year. Um, but you know, I, you know, just going to keep focusing on my career, um, finishing the master's program in August. I'm very excited about that. Um, but yeah, I know maybe some pitching lessons here and there, but nothing crazy. <laughs> what do you want to do like career wise? Um, so right now I work for a company called CACI, um, as a data analyst. Um, and so I definitely want to do something, you know, along those lines, long-term, uh, I graduated, uh, with BS in mathematics. So definitely into the nerdy, <laughs> you know, analyzing data, stuff like that. So, um, it's definitely something that I'll, I'll stay into. Yeah. You're quite ready. Then. You're going to have a pretty successful post softball career there. Uh, what's your legacy? What people talk about you and bring you up five, 10 years from now, what do you want them to say about you? Um, you know, as much as the, the physical side of things and, you know, the stats and stuff like that is, is awesome. Um, being a good teammate and just, you know, having my team's backs and, you know, to, to know that they can come to me for anything and um, just that I'm supportive. You know, I just, that's what I want to be remembered. And obviously a lot of people that don't know me personally aren't going to be able to see that, but from, you know, my team and the people that I've played with, that's how I want them to remember me. So. Well, it's been an honor to cover you throughout your career. It's going to be strange not to see you pitching in the circle. If you decide to, you know, hey, maybe play <laughs> professionally somewhere, we're not against that either. But you're going to be successful with you, what you're doing because you're <laughs> successful uh, throughout. Uh, Hannah Hall from in, uh, here from Virginia Wesleyan, three-time national champion, three-time pitcher of the year, the all-time winningest pitcher in the history of Division Three, the most decorated player in the history of D3. In other words, the GOAT joining us and in the circle. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an honor to talk to you and uh, hopefully we'll do this again down the road, but in the meantime, uh, enjoy yourself. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it.